So today's question comes from a customer, and that question is, can I buy a car with no credit? And I'm gonna make an answer that hopefully will help everybody, so I'm not mentioning your name, but thank you again for the question. And the answer also applies to my life here at the Subaru dealership and Fresno Mitsubishi right here in Fresno. We got the squiggly guys out here. So let's take a look at the question, can I buy a car with no credit? The other part of the question our customer asks is, can I buy a car with no license? So here's the information we have on this case. Customer says has no credit, customer says has no license, has also offered up a relative who is a cosigner, who they say has pretty good credit. So how does this work? A lot of people perceive the dealership as being the one that loans the money. That's usually not the case. And if that is the case, you're in a whole different situation than the one we're talking about here. I'm working from a dealership that's part of a national company uh, franchise and two fairly decent, uh, large, a larger uh, Japanese brands. Now I'm gonna hate that I use the word large because they're large compared to a lot on Blackstone Avenue that sells used cars, but they're not large compared to some very big brands that you probably know. So anyway, uh, you can buy a car if you're willing to pay a high enough interest rate and if you have enough down payment with zero credit. Sometimes people perceive a cosigner as being somebody who's secondary on the note, but as far as I know, and as far as every loan I've ever seen here in California, it's 50-50. It's not like uh, one person is less responsible than the other one. So if you uh, are a cosigner, it's pretty much your loan. So part of the things that cause problems there is if the cosigner already has two car loans and a mortgage, you know, sometimes it's hard to qualify on another car payment because they're equally responsible. One of the things people do right off the bat if they're trying to finance for the first time is go to the cheapest car they can find and figuring the payment will be lower and they'll be able to qualify for it better. Every situation is different. Every bank is different. Every driver is different. Every buyer is different. Everyone's credit is different. Everyone's job is different. Everyone's income is different. Sometimes you're better off going for a new car with a rebate because the rebate can act like down payment for you, supplementing what you have as a down payment, and you're buying the car, the amount you're financing is less than the value of the car. In some situations, you're better to buy a new car if you have no or beginner credit for reasons that the bank feels uh, you're gonna have less maintenance to keep up, they can hold their value longer, so if they have to repossess it, they'll have more of a car, and often, even though it's more money, your payment could be about the same because you might get better interest rates on a newer car. Sometimes you'll do better on a late model used car. Late model means, you know, it's not more than a couple years old. It might be a lease return or it might be a car that, say, one of the rental car agencies has sold at an auction. In this case, if the dealership paid a little enough for the car, you can get a great uh, deal that gets financed because it's not, in the case of this video, it's not really talking about uh, how good of a deal you get, it's can you get financed. So what I'm saying is, we purchased the car and we're still enough profit in it that we can sell it at a price that makes it attractive for the lender to finance you with your beginner credit. They're still in a good position, you're in equity position, they call that and you're able to get a loan. So the answer to the question, can I get a loan with new or starter credit or no credit, really comes down to how does your unique situation fit with the unique car with the banks and what they're offering at this particular time. So when I ask you for a credit application, it's not because I'm in a big hurry to run your credit and it's not because I wanna lock you into something and I'm gonna let you know that multiple inquiries is not good but if you search on Experian.com multiple inquiries you'll understand why they don't ding your score more than once as long as you do it in a shorter period of time because they know you're shopping for rate or in your case maybe just getting a loan what you don't want to do is go to a dealership that shoots you out to 20 banks with one mouse click and what we're gonna do here where I work is we're gonna see what works for you before we submit it to the right bank and we're gonna make sure what works for you 
will work for one of our lenders. So it all really starts with a credit application because just because you have a lower price car doesn't mean you're gonna get approved or have a lower price payment. Oftentimes, there's not even enough money for the bank to make on say a $6,000 car loan. They won't even do it because they're not gonna make any money. And that's what they're in business for. So with your credit application, we'll be able to make something work for you specifically based on your situation and what's going on in the market today. So it really didn't start off to be a pitch for why we need a credit application from you. It's just the smartest, fastest way to get an answer to the question. And we'll be working with real numbers and not things that we're all guessing at. So thanks again. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube page if you watch this whole video. I, I love you. And um, you can always reach out to me by clicking Ask Ed at edscarpage.com. Thank you.